in this powerful name of Jesus that has been given to us by our God, by the God of our salvation. We are here today to lift up and to magnify that holy and righteous name, and we are certainly glad and appreciative of this opportunity that we have to come before you today to bless the name of the Lord and to invite you into the presence of God so that we can collectively receive all that the Spirit of God has for us on this day and certainly in the days moving forward. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, we just bless Jesus and we bless the name of the Lord for giving us this opportunity that we have once again to come to you live on Facebook to share the word of the Lord with you and to have a worship experience that only God can give to us. But we trust that, uh, that all of you are doing well, that the blessing and the grace of God is uh, resting and ruling in your life. And uh, we are just looking forward to all that will be expressed and all that will be done in our service today to bless your life, to strengthen the things that God has called you to do. Amen. Uh, we're going to have a time of worship here in just a few moments. We do apologize for the slight delay. I'm not going to even get into why we were delayed, but we were delayed. Uh, and sometimes things happen, but uh, we thank God that we are here and able to move forward into today's service uh, so that we can experience uh, everything that God has preordained for us on this day. Uh, those of you that are watching, we want to encourage you to share the video, uh, start a watch party. We say this each and every time that we come on the air because we want to share the communion and the fellowship that we have with one another in Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, we know that God wants to bless you, but he also wants to bless your neighbors. He wants to bless your friends, your family members, your acquaintances. God even wants to bless your enemies. And so we want to encourage you uh, to share the video today so that we can uh, really uh, impart the grace and the anointing and the blessing that God gives to us uh, to those that are available to receive it. Well, we're going to get into the word in a little while. I'm going to be teaching on a very important subject that I think is going to be a blessing to all of you. Uh, we're going to be looking in the New Testament today and uh, sharing a very uh, vital and significant message uh, for those of you that are looking to be used by God, uh, not only now, but even in the days to come. The Lord is already prepared to give us another uh, new year in 2021, and uh, we certainly want to be in position and have the mindset to actually take everything that God gives to us and use it uh, to, its, to its maximum potential. And so we'll be dealing with that particular subject and issue today as we look into the word of God. How can you take what God has given to you and use it, get the potential out of it, extract it and use it for the glory of God so that he can be advanced in this world through your life and through the gifts and talents that he has placed in your heart. And uh, so we're looking forward to that today. So again, please share the video. Uh, let everyone know that we're on the air. We're going to uh, open up in prayer here in just a few moments, and then we'll share the word of the Lord. I know that some uh, of our regular viewers may be taking a few minutes longer to connect with us today because we usually start at 11 a.m., but we started a little late today. And again, we do apologize, but let's just pray and invite the presence of God in our midst so that he can do whatever he desires yes. to do in us, Absolutely. through us, for us, and around us to glorify his name. Heavenly Father, we just come before you now uh, to give you the glory, to give you all of the praise for who you are. Yes. We thank you for this day, for the gift of life that you've given to us. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather in your name, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to bless you in the beauty of holiness. And God, we ask that you would move in our midst today. We ask that your presence would be evident in this service today. God, we pray that you would just have free reign and free course in this atmosphere to do all that you have mandated to do before the foundation of the world. Gather your people today, God, from every stripe, from every walk of life, from all parts of the world, God, that they might receive 
oh God, the glory that they might receive of your word, that they might receive instruction, that they might receive greater clarity yes. from the throne room of heaven. Yeah. We ask you, God, to bless your people now. Sanctify this service. Consecrate it yes. unto you. We bind every hindering spirit that would rise up against the word of God and all that you would have for us in this place today, God. Send your ministering angels. Cover us in your blood and in your divine protection, oh God. Let the free-flowing power of your spirit be imminent in this place, God. Fall fresh upon the houses that are represented today, God. Move into families, into situations, God, into conditions, oh God, and turn it around for your glory and for your honor, God. We praise you in advance for all that you're going to do. We lift you up today, God. We exalt your name. We exalt your name above every demon, above every hex, above every spell, above all oppositional forces. We exalt the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we pray. Ah, that you would touch your people significantly today. That you would move in a special way in and throughout this service today. That even when the service is over, that you will continue to speak and minister and heal and deliver and set the captives free. That you might be praised for the great God that you are. Yes, you are great and you are mighty and you are holy and you are perfect in all of your ways, God. You are sovereign. You are just. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, and we are. exalt you today, God. Oh, God. We worship you today, yeah, God. Yeah. We magnify you yeah. today. Yeah. Ah, in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus, we praise your holy Hallelujah. name. Ah, let everything yeah. that have breath praise ye the Lord. We exalt Hallelujah. you, God. We exalt you. We extol you yes, in God. the name of Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. We offer up our praises unto you because you're glorious. Yes. You're majestic, oh Hallelujah. God. Hey, yes, Lord. We bless you today. Oh, we bless God. you today. Yes, yes. We bless you today, God. Yes, we bless you today, God. You gave us life. We bless you today, God. You gave us a roof over our head. We bless you today. You gave us food to eat. You gave us uh, the activity of our limbs, God. You gave us health and strength, God. You protected us. You watched over us. You made ways out of no ways, God. You turned darkness into light. And we bless you today, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Send your angels today, God. Send a special anointing in this atmosphere that your people might be transformed, that they might be enlightened, that they might be illuminated by your word and by your spirit, oh God. We thank you that whatever you do, ah, you're going to bless your people mightily. We bless you, God, for all that's even stirring in this atmosphere now, for all that is moving right now, for all that is shifting right now, for all that is taking place right now. We come against heaviness. We come against depression. We come against suicidal thoughts. We come against aggravation and anxiety. We come against traps and plots and plans and strategies of the enemy in the north, the south, the east, and the west. God, we declare and decree that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. We, oh God, condemn every tongue that would speak against us and rise against us in the spirit realm. We take authority and dominion in this place and in the lives of your people through the name of Jesus. Bless us now, God. And we will give you the honor that you rightfully deserve. In Jesus, name. In Jesus name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to turn the service over to Minister Pam. Let's lift our hearts up hallelujah. to the Lord. Let's open up our mouths, our spirit, and give him the glory that he rightfully deserves. I'll be back soon with the word from the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I belong to a most high God. No greater place I'd rather be. No greater place I'd rather be. Let's exalt him today. Hallelujah.
just had to scroll. <laughs> We're getting there. Thank you, Jesus. Have to go back to the email, yeah. to the messages. Yeah. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. We're getting it. Thank you, God. We just thank and praise God. We thank and praise God for for all that He is, because everything that we need is in Christ Jesus. There is nothing that, that we can't have. We just have to trust and believe. Have faith in him. Glory to God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are right now, God. We know sometimes the enemy tries to cause things to slow us down. But you know, God, we know that they, as long as you sit on the throne, you look high, you look low. It's all in control. The enemy can never win over us unless you let him. And we're not going to let him because our God is greater. Our God is more powerful. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're all that I need. No matter what.
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. <laughs> you hit that. Go back to the email. Right there. Pam. It's not, it's not letting you go to your list. You strong. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. We just have a slight technical difficulties, but you know what? We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Anyhow, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And don't make no difference, honey, because wherever you be, you can lift up the name of Jesus. Because he said, if I be lifted up, he'll draw the men unto him. Hallelujah. So let's magnify him today. Wherever you're at right now, oh, oh, magnify the Lord. Yes, because he is the rock. Uh-huh. I said, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. I said, oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to Just led us into 
And now we are going to uh, get ready to open up the word of God and hear what the spirit of God is saying to us out of his word. And so we want to call your attention now uh, to the gospel of St. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. I have a teaching that I want to uh, deliver to you today. I think it's going to be a blessing uh, to those of you that are really trusting God to do uh, some amazing and significant things, things in your life. And uh, so we're going to again invite your attention to the gospel of St. Matthew 25. Yes. Let me give you just another moment or so just to grab your Bibles or your phones or whatever you use for uh, the reading of Scripture. But again, we're looking at Matthew 25. I want to get right into the message today. I don't want to keep you long, but I have just a little word that I believe that the Lord has placed in my spirit to share with all of you. And uh, I'm very excited uh, to be the vessel that God is using to deliver it. Amen. I want to uh, begin reading at verse number 14, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And again, we'll be uh, reading in Matthew 25. We'll read from verse 14 all the way down to verse 30. Uh, and so I'm going to invite you to stand with me for the reading of the word, if you don't mind doing so. It is our tradition and our custom to stand for the reading of the word. So if you're right there in your homes and you want to stand with us uh, in celebration and in honor of our tradition as a church, I'd like to ask you to stand with us in Matthew 25, verse 14 through verse number 30. Amen. The Bible says in verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Amen. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 24, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou that hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slowful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a different report. Okay. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury or interest. Uh -huh. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents 
For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that shall, but from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. Mm -hmm. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can we say amen for the reading of the word? Amen. 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 Again, I just read to you Matthew 25, verse 14 through verse number 30. I want to speak to you today from the subject, use it. Use it. The simple subject yes. today uh, that we're using today is use it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Use it. I want to uh, take the next few moments to walk you through these uh, scriptures because I think that it is more important for us to have an understanding than it is for us to make you shout and dance and all of that sort of thing. Now we love to, uh, to give God praise and to uh, offer up all of the different expressions uh, that we express in the house of God as we rejoice in the presence of God. But as the scripture says, in all of thy getting, get an understanding. Yes, and I think it's more important for us, particularly in the times and in the days that we live in now, to get the proper understanding that yes, we need. Yes. Because you can rejoice and have a good time and high five your neighbor and still walk out of the house of God without the proper understanding and still live a defeated life. Yes. But that is not God's will for us, nor is it his purpose and his design for our lives. He desires that we walk in power and yeah. we walk in dominion and authority upon this earth. But it's difficult to do that when you lack understanding. Yeah. And so we want to deal with this portion of scripture today to bring you uh, into the mind of God. And not only into the mind of God, I want to bring you into the mind of God concerning you. Okay. I want you to hear that. I want you to come into the mind of God concerning you. And one of the things that I want to begin this message with is that I want you to understand that God, when he saves you, when he brings you into his kingdom, he has an expectation of you. He has an expectation of you that he expects certain things to come out of your life that glorifies him. Wow. That not only does he save you because he loves you, but when he saves you and bring you into his grace and when he brings you into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and when he places his spirit in you, it is important that you understand as a believer that God now has an expectation of you. That he expects to bring out of you the very things that he placed upon you. Right. That he expects to get fruit out of your life. Mm -hmm. That he expects to, uh, to see some things manifest through you that glorifies him. That exalts his name. What I'm trying to say is that when God saves you. When he sets you free. When he brings you into the royal family of God. He does not bring you into the royal family of God for you to just kind of sit by casually and wait for Jesus to come to bring you into that heavenly place to live eternally. But while you are here in the land of the living, God's expectation of you is that he will partner with you by his spirit and use you in extraordinary ways to bring glory to his name and to his kingdom. If you don't understand that as a believer, you're going to be lost. If you don't understand that as a believer, your life is going to be unfruitful and unproductive. But that, again, is not God's plan for us. All right. That God knows what he has placed in your heart. He knows what he created and designed you to do. And he has an expectation that you will work with him to see those things be facilitated in this earth. You can no longer just sit by casually in the body of Christ. You cannot sit by as a spectator, as one who is sitting in the stands, uh, watching a, a ball game and just kind of eyeing what is going on. Yes. 
No, you have to get out of the stands. You have to remove yourself from being a spectator and become a participator. That you have to work with the Holy Ghost and allow the Holy Ghost to work inside of you to bring the glory of God out of you so that God can be revealed through your life. And that is the expectation. That God expects you to be fruitful. Yes. God expects you to be productive. God expects to bring meaning out of your life. God expects there to be a harvest that comes out of the fruit of what he has placed inside of you. And again, if you don't understand that, if you don't get that revelation, you can be saved, you can be in the house of God and still not understand that there is an expectation that is hovering over your life where God desires to see more come out of you. As we look at this particular parable, I believe that this parable really uh, heeds to the authenticity and verifies the authenticity of what I just said to you. Let's walk through this particular portion of scripture beginning at verse number 14. Now just this is Jesus talking. He is giving to us a parable or an illustration of what the kingdom of heaven is like. And he starts out by saying in verse 14, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Now, what I want you to understand out of this particular verse is that God has given to you something. God has given to you of his goods that there is something in your heart, in your spirit, in your intellect, in your design that God placed in you. So you do have something. You do have something to bring to the table. You do have something that God has placed at your disposal. Now, I want you to understand that there is so much jealousy and so much envy in the world today, even in the body of Christ. And there's so much jealousy and envy that exists in the midst of us because we don't understand as individuals that God has given to us something. You will become a jealous hearted person and a very envious person when you don't realize that God has placed something at your disposal. When you understand that God has given to you something, when you understand that you have something valuable, when you understand that there's treasure in you, uh -huh. you don't waste time being jealous and envious of other people because what you want to understand is that God has given to every human being something to bring forth. He has given to every person, every servant, every believer something that as they begin to work with the Holy Ghost, it brings praise unto the name of God. Uh -huh. But you've got to know what's been given to you. Understand again, in this particular portion of scripture, Jesus says that, that the, the man traveling into a far country called his servants and delivered unto them his goods. You have the goods. You have the goods. You have what it takes. You have something inside of you. God did not send you into this world empty handed. You have something special. You have something unique. You have something that is tailor made to the continuity of your design by God. You have something to offer that can bring a change and a difference into that situation. You've got to understand that clearly, that you have been given the goods. You have been given the talent. You have been given the ministry. You have been given the calling. You have been given a certain anointing. When you don't understand that, you're going to be looking at other people around you. You're going to start feeling insecure. You're going to start feeling like you're less than other people because you don't understand that God puts some goods in your hand. Are you following what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that, that God has placed something in your hands. He has placed something in your spirit. And you've got to see that it is great. You've got to see that it has great significance regardless of what it is. Now look at verse number 15. Jesus then goes on to say, And unto one he gave five talents. 
to another two talents, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Mm -hmm. So this man traveling into a far country, he comes to his servants, and he bestows upon them the goods of his kingdom. And that refers to God giving to you his gifts, his talents, his blessing is upon your life. But listen at this. In verse 15 it says, he gave one five talents, he gave to another two talents, and to another he gave one. What you must understand is that God does not give us all the same. All right. God does not give to us all the same gifts. He does not give to me what he's going to give to you. He does not give to another person the same thing that he gives to that person. What God does is he diversifies his gifts, his goods, to the individuals that he wants to give them to. Many people have said uh, in error that God is fair, and I disagree with that. God is not fair. What you must understand is that God is just. Thank you. The Bible never said that God is fair, meaning that he will just give to us all equally what he wants us to have. No, God is going to give to you what you can handle. God is going to give to you according to the purpose by which you were created. And all of us are not created to do the same thing. All of us don't look the same. All of us don't sound the same. Same. All of us do not walk the same way. All of us do not think the same way by design. And God wants you and I to understand that when he gives to us of his goods, of his treasure, of his anointing, of his giftings, that he does not dispose of those giftings, nor does he uh, give out those giftings equally. To one he gives five talents. To another, he gives two. Mm -hmm. To another, he gives one. And what it is, is you've got to learn how to be content with what he gave you. Yeah. You've got to learn how to be content with the gift that he placed in your heart. Yeah. What happens is we start comparing what God has given to us to what he has given to another. And when that begins to happen, we become either inflated in our ego or we become uh, full of low self-esteem. Yes. And neither one of those are good for you. When you start comparing what God has given to you to what he has given to another man or to another woman, it is going to cause you to be prideful or it is going to cause you to walk down with your head hung low, feeling as if you are unworthy, feeling as if God doesn't love you, feeling as if God doesn't want to bless you, and that is a lie. God gives to us based on the calling that he has called us to. God gives to us and allocates to us what he has given to us based on the purpose that we serve in the body of Christ. Based on the purpose that we serve in this world and in the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? Now listen to this scripture carefully. He gave to one five. He gave to another two. And he gave to another one. And I love what he says next. He gave them what he gave them according to their several ability. Now this word talents is translated into money. So he gives to one money. He gives to one some money. He gives to another some money. And he doesn't give them all the same amount. But what the scripture goes on to say is that he gives to them and he gives to every man according to their several ability. In other words, God gives to you what he gives to you based on your capacity, based on your capacity, based upon what you're able to work with. God gives to you what you can handle. He does not give to you more than what your skill set can manage. He's not going to give to you more than what you can handle because God is not a God of waste. Listen to that. He is not a God of waste. That's why you've got to stop comparing your life to other people's lives. You've got to learn how to use what he gave you. Even if it's five, 
Even if it's two talents, even if it's one talent, God is not going to judge your life based on what he gave to another man. He is not going to judge your life based on what he gave to your friend, what he gave to your neighbor. God is only going to judge you based on what he placed at your disposal. He is only going to judge you based on what he called you to do. He's only going to judge you based on the, on the skill set that he placed in your life because they're not all the same. But he gave to these individuals talents based on their several ability. Yes. That means you've got to know what you can do. <laughs> you've got to know what you can do. You've got to know your strengths from your weaknesses. Oh. Yes. You can't lie to yourself and think that you can handle more than what you can handle. That you can do more than what you can do. God is only going to give you according to your ability. All right. God is only going to give to you according to how you think and how you process. And he looks at all of the gifts and the talents that he has placed in your heart. And he is saying, based on what I gave you, that is going to be the assignment that I place upon yes. your life. Yes. You can only do what you have been built to do. Oh, you've got to hear me. You can only do what you're anointed to do. You can only do what you're designed to do. You can only do what you were created to do. You can't do anything more and you can't do anything less. So you've got to find out what it is God has given you to do by examining your own capacity. If you can't handle 50 church members, then you need to be honest with them. If you can't, if you don't have the capacity to, to handle a, a, a thousand member uh, company, then, then, then you have to understand that you're, you have a capacity to manage something on a lower level. And there's nothing wrong with that because you're only built and designed to handle certain things. Yes. And that means you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to know what you can do and what you cannot do. You've got to understand what you can handle and what you can't handle. Uh -huh. And you can't just take on responsibilities because somebody else is doing it. You want to understand what it is that you were built to do, built to handle. Understand your, uh, your ability to handle certain pressure. To, to understand your ability to handle certain information that comes into your life and how you manage that. All, it, all of that is going to have everything to do with whether or not you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And notice again, he gave to one five talents. He gave to another two talents. He gave to another one talent according to their capacity. According to their ability. According to what they could do. Are you trying to run your race in somebody else's lane? Come on now. Are you operating in something that you're really not built to do? When you are operating in something that you're really not built to do, it creates confusion. It creates confusion. It creates uh, a sort of a dysfunction. Within the thing that you're trying to do, it creates confusion and animosity within that atmosphere because you are out of place. You are taking on responsibilities that perhaps you're not built to handle. When you find your rightful place, there is a flow of the anointing. There's a flow of the Holy Spirit. There's a grace that comes over your life. See, you must understand when you are in the proper calling, when you are operating according to God's design for your life, there's an anointing that comes over you to do that job. Yes. And, and people that are watching you, they, they think that you do it so easily. And it's not that you do it so easily. It's just that you have a grace to do it. Amen. You have an anointing to do it. Have you ever watched someone that does what they do and it seems so easy for them and then all of a sudden you try to do it yourself? And when you try to do it, it feels like there's so much stress and so much pressure and then you start to realize that, well, wait a minute, I can't do this, but it looked easy to him. It looked easy to her. Well, it looked easy to them because they're in their lane. They're, they're operating in their capacity. They're operating within the scope of what God anointed.
anointed them to do. You are best when you are working in alignment with what God has given you the capacity to do. There are certain things that I can't do. There are certain things that I don't want to do. There are certain things I don't even have an interest in doing. I can only work in the realm that God has gifted me to work in. If I'm not a pastor, I don't want to be a pastor. If I'm not a deacon, I don't want to be a deacon. If I'm not a CEO of a company, I don't want to strive for that. I only want to go after things that God has anointed for me to do. I only want to pursue things that has my name on it. If it doesn't have my name on it, I don't want it. I only want what God has for me. Because when God has something for you, nobody else can take it. When God has something for you and it's got your name on it, I don't care how much they hate you. I don't care how jealous they are of you. I don't care how envious they are of you. What God has for you is for you. If it's got your name on it, if you're anointed for it, if you're gifted to do it, that thing is going to manifest in your life. But you only want to go after the things that God has ordained for your life. Anything outside of what God has ordained for me, it'll never work. Anything outside of my life that comes into my life that, that God didn't mean for me to possess, it is only going to create more havoc in my life. It is only going to create a disturbance in my life that is totally unnecessary because God only gives me a certain capacity to do certain things. And when I operate outside of that capacity, it creates unnecessary stress. Are you listening to me? He gave them what he gave them according to their ability. But you've got to be real about what you can do. You've got to be real about what you can do. If, if you're not good at administrative type of work, then don't pursue it. Mm, come on. Don't pursue it. And don't allow other people to put titles on you that God didn't put on you. Don't allow people to put responsibilities on your shoulders that God did not place upon your shoulders. God knows what you are built to handle. God knows what you are built to handle. There are some cars that are operate like a Ferrari. And then there are some cars that are Toyota Corollas. They're not all the same. They're not built the same. They don't operate at the same speed. But they're both cars. And they can both travel. But they can only do what they were designed to do. Am I making sense? You've got to find what you were designed to do. What you were made for. What you were created for. And stick to that. And work with that. And operate in that capacity. And do what you know in your heart and in your spirit that you can do. And, and stay in the realm of a tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Where you stop looking into everybody else's backyard. Comparing oranges and apples. Because you are not content with what God has called you to do. Are you listening to me? Now listen at what he says next. In verse uh, 16, the Bible says, Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Now here's the deal. When God gives you what he gives to you, it is now your responsibility to take what he gave to you and produce a harvest. See, you didn't hear that. When God gives to you whatever he gives to you, it is now your responsibility, not God's responsibility. <laughs> it is your responsibility to take what is at your disposal and put it to work to bring about a harvest. Yes. Not only to bring about a harvest, but to bring about an increase. The individual that had received five talents went out and used the five talents and brought in an additional five talents. He brought in increase. God is not going to sit back and just do everything for us. All right. I know you listen to certain people and even in the body of Christ, they'll make you think that God is just going to do everything. 
God's going to pray for you. God's going to go to church for you. God's going to lay hands for you. God's going to preach for you. God's going to study for you. God's going to brush your teeth for you. God's going to put on your clothes. God's going to do everything for you as if we have no responsibility because we live by faith and because we live up under grace. But faith without works is dead. Come on now. You've got to put what God has placed in your hands to work. Yes. You've got to use what he has placed at your disposal and work with the Holy Spirit and his anointing and the grace that is upon your life in hopes of bringing out of your life an increase. An increase. Five turned into ten. Are you hearing that? The five turned into ten. Are you expecting increase? All right. yes. Are you expecting more? Mm -hmm. Are you looking to do more than what you did in 2020 in, compared to what you're going to do in 2021? Yes. Are you making plans? Are you strategic in understanding that God's expectation is that what you received in 2020 that you'll be able to increase it and double it in 2021? You've got to have on your mind that whatever God has given to me, I'm getting ready to take it to another level. All right. I've got to take it to another oh, place. Yeah, okay. I've got to work. I've got to labor and partner with the Holy Spirit and see what I can do to bring a greater increase out of what he has placed in my hands. Or are you still working with what he gave you initially? Come on. And God can see no increase. He can see no productivity. He can see no value to what he placed in your hand because you didn't do anything with it. Now listen now. The individual that had been given five talents took what God gave to him and he doubled it. Not only did he do it, the Bible also says that the guy that had received the two talents, he took what he had received and doubled it as well. So the individual that had five talents went out and worked and put his money to use and came back with interest. The individual that had received two talents went and worked and put his talents to use or his money to use and created an interest as well. And both of them doubled what God had given to them. They doubled it. They brought back to God more than what he gave them. They brought back to God more than what he had initially deposited with inside of them. Now hear me when I say this. God gives you the gift. But what you do with the gift is your gift to God. Mm, mm. Let me say that again. Yes. God gives you the gift. God gives you the anointing. God gives you the talent. God gives you the intellect. God gives you the ability. Now what you do with what he gave you is your gift to him. What most people do is that they receive from God and they just stop there. They don't do anything with it. They sit on what God has given to them. They don't activate it. They don't put it to work. And you wonder why there's not more happening in your life. It's because God is saying, I've already placed some things at your disposal, but you're not using it. You're not using it. You keep looking to heaven and heaven is looking down upon you. You keep looking to God to open up a door and God is saying, I've already put the tool in your hand. You keep looking for God to, to part the Red Sea, Moses, and the rod is already right there in your hands. All you've got to do is stretch it and see the mercies and the grace and the power of God be released. What you must understand is that the individual that had five talents and the individual that had two talents, they went out and worked what God had given to them and they brought to the kingdom of God more than what they initially possessed because they understood that God's expectation of them was to bring forth more than what he gave them. 
I came today to tell you that God is counting on you to deliver to his kingdom more than what you started with. Amen. That God, if you're going to go to college, you ought to get a degree. If you're going to go and work in his vineyard, you ought to come back with something greater than what he gave you. If he gave you 10, you ought to come back with 20. If he gave you 40, you ought to double it and at least come back with 60. God wants to do more in your life and you've got to recognize and realize that his expectation of you is that you will become a productive citizen in his kingdom and not just sit by for him to do everything for you. In fact, it's not even about what God is doing for you. The question is, what are you doing for God? Yes. What are you doing for his namesake? What are you doing to advance his purposes? What are you doing in terms of communing with him so that you can be downloading revelation and understanding so that you can move into greater powers and to greater authority and to greater dominion in life so that you can see the kingdom of God be advanced through you? Yes. You've got to realize that God gave these individuals money and then they had to take the responsibility of using it and doing what they needed to do with it out of the wisdom of God to bring about more than what they had before. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand this clearly. I don't want you to be confused about what I'm teaching. I want you to understand clearly by the Spirit of God that the Lord knows exactly what he placed in you. Yes. He knows exactly what he called you to do. He knows exactly what he built you to do. And he knows exactly what he placed in your hands. Mm -hmm. And God is going to come back at some later time and check to see what did you do with what he gave you. He's going to check to see. That's what the judgment seat of, of Christ is all about. It, it is God checking to see what did you do with what I gave you. What did you do with the intellect that I gave you? What did you do with the tenacity that I gave you? What did you do with the power that I gave you? What did you do with the information that I gave you? What did you do with the exposure that I allowed to come into your life? What did you do with it? What did you do with the life experiences that I gave you? What did you do with the money I gave you? What did you do with the church I gave you? What did you do with the preaching I exposed you to? What did you do with the word I delivered to you? It doesn't matter. Come on. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. Come what on, matters yes. is what did you do yes. with what God laid at your feet. Yes, yes. Oh, you gotta hear me. You yes. gotta hear me. You gotta hear me. You gotta hear me. I hear people all over the over the place talking about Jesus is about to come. And I and I subscribe to that thinking too, but I don't know when the day or the hour is. And none of us does. And, and he's coming at some point in the very near future. But we don't know when. It could be 10 years from now or 20 years years from now or it could be tonight we don't know that but I do know that when it's all over God is going to sit you at the seat of judgment and ask of you what did you do with everything I place in your spirit what did you do with those ideas I gave you what did you do with that teaching I exposed you to each and every week Come on now, That's good. are you hearing what I'm saying what did you do with it what did you do with it? Did you use it? Did you use it? You, 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 you've, been in, you've been in church for 30 years. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Some of you were raised in church. Some of you were born in church. You were a little infant and you, your mother brought you to church. And you've been raised in church. You, you know church. You, you heard the word. You've heard it all your life. The question now is, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with the anointing that you, that you have been exposed to? And I've got to tell you this. And I've got to be obedient to the Lord. Because the Lord told me that some of you that are watching and listening today, that you've been exposed to too much for you to be living the way you're living. For you to be thinking the way you're thinking. For you to still be defeated. For you to still have a lack of understanding and power in your life. You've been exposed to 
too much to not have more power operating inside of you. What are you going to do with what's in your hands? What are you going to do with the word that comes to you? Are you going to sit on it? Are you going to just rest on it? Are you just going to sit by day after day and week after week and month after month and wait for somebody else to come? To bring something in your life where God has given you the power to activate and to bring into your own life by the spirit of use? Oh God, are you listening to what I'm saying? One of the problems that the man had when he was laying at the pool of Bethesda is that he had been sick for 38 years. Oh, can I preach this? The man had been sick for 38 years and he had been sitting beside the pool of Bethesda and then Jesus comes along and says to the man, he says, I know that you've been here for 38 years, but do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? In other words, do you want to get up? Because if you want to get up, you can get up. If you want to come up, you can come up. If you want a better life, you can have a better life. If you really want to be healed, you can be healed. If you really want to be delivered, you can be delivered. If you really want change, you can have change. It's up to you. Oh, you got to hear me. It's up to you. It's up to you. God is not going to send out an angel. God is not going to do this through osmosis. you got to make a decision to go for what you want, to go for what God has called you to do, to move in that position, to pursue it. you got to pursue it. you got to know that it's yours. And the man laying at the pool, he said, for 38 years I've been sitting at this pool. And Jesus said, do you want to get well? And listen to what the man said. He said, I have no man to put me in the pool. I have no man to put me in the pool. Are you going to put your destiny in the hands of other people? Are you going to continue to put your life in the hands of other people waiting for somebody else to do something for you that you could do for yourself? In 38 years, the man could have crawled to the pool. The man could have scooted himself into the pool by that time. He could have done all that is necessary to do to get himself into the pool. Or are you sitting by the banks of the promises of God just sitting and waiting for somebody to come along at the right time because you're at the right place to see them do something for you that God has called you to do for yourself? Are you hearing what I'm saying? God wants you to understand through this parable that he's going to come back at some time in your life and check on the thing that he placed in you. And what he's going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? Yeah. This is what the Bible says when it says to whom much is given, much is required. Oh, you got to hear me today. Who much is given, much is required. In other words, God is saying, if I gave you much, then the requirement is going to be much. If I gave you little, then I have little expectation. But if I gave you much, you must understand that the expectation is that you'll do much with what I gave you. If I gave you a big gift, then I need you to use your gift. Yeah. If I gave you a strong anointing, then I'm expecting a greater harvest to come out of that anointing. To come out of what I placed in your hands. I'm talking to some people right now. You're so gifted. You're so talented that it's mind-boggling. You have some things inside of you because you've been through so much hell and high water. You buried it and you covered it up and you dumb it down yourself. But there's, there's so much inside of you that it will wreck all of Satan's kingdom and all of his plans uh, concerning your life and those with whom you have to do. And God is sending you this word today so that you can awaken out of your stupor and begin to activate that which he has placed inside of you so that he can get the glory out of your life because you have the answer to what he placed in you. It's not just about him letting you come on into heaven. All right. It's, it's not just about him saying, there's your crown of righteousness. Come on. And he wants to say that to you. And he wants to bless you in that capacity. But not until you answer. 
to what he placed in your hands. Not until you answer, what did you do with what I gave you? With what I gave you? With what I gave you? You got to hear it. With what I gave you? What did he give you? Hey, what did he give you? What did he place in your heart? Come on. What did he place in your spirit? Jesus. That you've allowed the world and negative people and negativism and pessimistic spirits agitate you enough to drive out of your life. What did God place in you to use that when you use it, it brings change, it brings deliverance, it makes other people happy, it makes other people smile, it brings deliverance into the lives of other people, it brings transformation into the atmosphere, it shifts everything when you do what you do when you do it because you know God has placed something in your hands. The God that had five talents turned around and doubled it into ten. The one that had two talents doubled it and came out with four. Mm -hmm. But then the Bible says that the gentleman that had received one talent, I pray you're listening to me. The gentleman that had received one talent, the Bible says that he went and dig into the earth. And he hid his talent. He buried what God had given to him. The guy with the five talents, he used it. Uh -huh. The guy with the two talents, he used it. The gentleman with the one talent, he went and buried it and hid the talent, the gift that God had given to him. He sat on it. He sat on it. Hmm. He sat on it. You're bored because you're sitting on it. You feel like you have no life. The reason being is because you're sitting on a gold mine. Well, Jesus, you're sitting on it. Speak to you're not working it. You're sitting on it. You've buried it. You've, you've buried it. You, you feel like you, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere because you're sitting on it. You're sitting on what God gave you. You're sitting on the increase. You're looking for wealth and wealth is in you. But you're sitting on it. Oh God. I'm going to preach it until you get it. You're looking for a breakthrough. When the breakthrough is in you. But you can't experience it. Because you're sitting on it. God. You've buried it. You buried it and you're complaining about that neighborhood and you're complaining about how those people think. And God has given you a sense of agitation and anger because he's trying to let you know that you have the answer in you, but you won't use it. My Lord. You won't use it. You're sitting on it. You're si Some of you are sitting on companies. Mm. Not company, companies. Mm. Some of you are sitting on inventions, but you won't put your idea to work. Some of you are sitting on ministries. You're waiting on an opportunity and God is saying, create one. Because I put it in you, but you're sitting on it. You buried it. You buried it. And some of you, you buried your dream and you buried your life and you buried your purpose in God because you've had some bad experiences and because somebody came along and hurt you. But you've got to let that go now. You've got to forget those things which are behind you and press to those things which are before you. You've got to wipe the tears out of your eyes. You're getting ready to come into a new year and you can't afford to keep telling God, I can't, I can't do it because of what they said and because of what they did and because of what hurt me and because of something that happened 20 years ago because God is saying I'm bigger than your past and I'm bigger than what happened to you and I'm bigger than what they said about you I put something in your heart and I put something in your spirit and it is time for you to arise and it is time for you to take your position and it is time for you to activate the very thing I place on the inside of you you buried it for 10 years some of you buried it for 20 years and God is saying now you've got to excavate that gift. Excavate what is down inside of you and go for it. And let the Lord use it. And let the Lord bring it out of your life. See, you've got to understand that you are here for God. 
See, you didn't hear that. You've got to realize that you are here for God. That you are not here just for fame and fortune. You are not here just to be recognized on social media. You are here so that God can get out of you what he placed on the inside of you. And you take the responsibility of taking what he placed inside of you to create increase. So that. When your life is over, God can see the increase. And he will say to you what he said to the guy that had five talents and the guy who had two talents. He said to both of them, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. And now thou shalt be ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You may think that this is an elementary thing, but this is what all of us want to hear when our lives expire. When we come to the end of the road, when we come to the end of our journey, all of us want to hear those great words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But he can only say that when you use what he gave you. He can't say well done, thou good and faithful servant when you buried it. When you hide what he gave you, when you just sit on it, but the man went and hid the talent. He buried it. He buried it. Some of you, you won't even use your gift because you say you got church hurt. <laughs> but you got hurt at the job and you kept working. <laughs> oh yes you did Stay with me, stay with me Don't shut me off right now You got hurt by your best friend And y'all still kicking it Y'all still having a good time You got hurt by your husband But you still love him And you keep coming home And you keep cooking And you keep, keep doing this and that and the other You may have church hurt But you still have to allow the blood to cleanse you And the blood to sanctify you And get up and do what God told you to do are you listening to Come on. me? I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost pushing somebody right now because you're coming into a new year but your, your 2021 is going to look like 2020 and 2019 and 2018 and 2017 if you keep burying what God placed in you. This man that had one talent buried his gift now listen to what Jesus said about him in verse 26. He said, in verse 26 it says, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slowful servant. Uh -oh. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. See, this man had all kind of excuses. He started making up excuses. He had a bad perception of who God was. He looked at God as kind of like this hard taskmaster. But anybody that really loves you will have an expectation of greatness for you. See, you just miss what I said. People that don't love you, they'll just let you be nothing. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You, you just miss what I said. I, I just dropped something on you. People that don't care about you don't care about what you become. They don't care about what you do. They don't care if you just throw your life away. On, they don't man. care if you just become a nobody. Uh -huh. But people that love you have an expectation of you because they can see what's in you. And if they really love you, they will talk to you. They will talk to you and talk yeah. to you and try to motivate you and try to inspire yeah. you because they know that you're more than who you are right uh -huh. now. You can do more than what you've been doing. You're, you're, you're making F's in school, but you're an A student. And they would, uh, and they would confront you because you're settling when you can do much more. No, oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. This man buried his talent. He buried the talent. And Jesus says that the man that comes to check on his goods and he recognizes that the man that had the one talent buried it. He said, thou wicked and slothful servant. He called him wicked. He called him wicked. He called him wicked. I want you to hear the seriousness of this. 
He called him wicked and slowful. Slowful means lazy. He says, you mean that you went and buried what I gave you? You sat on it all your life? You didn't do nothing with what I gave you? You mean to tell me you are returning to me the same thing I gave you with no increase? And I gave you 60 years to live? I gave you 80 years to live? I gave you 100 years to live? And you didn't do anything with it? I gave you time. I gave you grace. I gave you access to the kingdom. I gave you my word. I, I have given you anointing. I've given you a good church. I've given you a good preacher. I've given you access to the word. And you don't do anything with it? He said, Thou wicked and lazy servant. Don't allow COVID-19 to make oh, you lazy. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Oh, that's good. That's good. That is really good. I know you can't go to and fro like you used to, but you can do something. You can do something even if, even if you have to put together some things on your computer, on your laptop. You can keep your mind active. Keep your spirit charged. You may not be able to go to the mall, but you can walk around your neighborhood. Just to keep yourself activated, keep your mind stirred up. You can listen to information that inspires you. You can listen to good preaching and good teaching that motivates you to be all that God has called you to be. Because COVID-19, I'm sure, is not going to last forever. But if you let COVID-19 make you lazy, if you allow church hurt to keep you inactive, if you allow the things of your past to debilitate you and cripple you. I want you to understand you will be without excuse because God want, wanted me to tell you that, that he placed some things in your life and when your life ends, all he wants to know is did you do what I told you? Did you do what I assigned you to do? Did you do what I put in your heart to do. Well, I went through a divorce and, and they hated me and they didn't like me, but did you do what I told you to do? They didn't accept me and, and I, had, I had an evil boyfriend. Did you do what I told you to do? Did you miss your assignment? Did you get caught up into the world? Did you get caught up into the mess? Did you get caught up into the negativity and lose sight of who you really are and what you have been designed to do and that you've lost sight that you have some things to accomplish for my name's sake and I've already placed in you to get the work and the job done? Or did you bury it? God says to this servant, thou wicked and slothful servant, Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strong. Verse 37, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. In the King James it means with interest. You know what God said? He said you should have taken the money I gave you and you should have given it to the exchangers. You should have traded it. You should have invested it. You should have done something with it. You should have done something with it to bring about interest. Interest is increase. There ought to be a surplus, something left over, something more than what you started with. Oh, God. Something greater than what you initially had. But not this man. He buried it. And listen at what the word says in verse 28. I'm not trying to condemn anyone. I want you to hear that this is in the scripture. Listen at verse 28. He says, take therefore the talent from him 
and give it unto him which has ten talents. See, you didn't read that part. Verse 28, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. Uh -huh. The gentleman that had one talent and buried it, God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that talent I gave you and I'm going to give it to somebody else. Because I need you to hear what I'm about to say. Because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. And God took what he had given to someone else and placed it in the hands of somebody who was going to do something with it. You're complaining over the little that you have and somebody else could come into that situation and see a blessing in it and take that thing to another place because you can't see what God has given to you. You're complaining about it and you're murmuring about it and, and you think it's nothing at all. Somebody else could step into that situation with a new set of eyes and a new set of vision and take the gifts and the talents that they have and move that thing into a dimension like you've never seen before because there are some of us that knows how to take little and do much with it because we know how to get an interest from what we started with. Hey, I don't want to be the same man I was last year. I don't want to be the same preacher I was five years ago. I want to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And if God has it for me, then you best believe I want it. If the promises of God are yes and amen, then I want my hands on it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Are you hear what I'm saying? He said, take. See, if you don't use it, God's going to take it. I need to warn you. If you don't use it, God's going to take it. If you won't do it, he's going to call somebody else to do it. There are divine replacements that God will bring into the body of Christ and bring into the world. If you won't answer the call, somebody else will. If you won't fill the position, somebody else will. If you won't sit in the chair, somebody else is saying, is standing there in the wings. Somebody is just waiting to come behind you to take up the place, to take up the position that you refuse to fill. Because the vision is always bigger than you. God's plan is greater than one person. If you refuse to do your part, he's talking to somebody else. He's ministering to someone else. He's putting it in their spirit. Don't yeah. allow what God has given to you to be taken because you keep burying what he gave you to do. Because you keep sitting on it. Because you keep waiting. You keep making excuses. The Lord said, I'll take it and I'll give it to the guy. Notice he gave it to the guy that has the ten talents. Because he's the most productive. He's the most productive. He's going to do something with it. Hear me again. I said it earlier. God is not a God of waste. He does not cast pearls before swine. If you're not going to do anything with it, stop wasting my time. If you're not going to see the value in it, then give me somebody that will receive it. All right, yeah. if, if you're just going to take it or leave it and have that kind of attitude about it and you don't see the significance in it, give me somebody who's hungry. <laughs> oh, you got to hear me. Give me somebody who's thirsty. I don't need a church full of people. I just need some hungry people. Oh, you better hear what I'm saying. I'm not concerned about crowds. I'm concerned about who's hungry and who's yeah, thirsty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd rather have somebody who wants it. I'd rather have somebody who wants the revelation of God's word than to be preaching to a hundred thousand. I want the hunger. I want the thirsty souls. I want somebody who will lap it up like dogs and get it in their heart and get it in their spirit. David said, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after the old God. 
I'm desperate for your presence. I'm desperate for your word. I want to be used on a higher level. I want to see the impact. I want to see a greater influence. I want to see souls be saved and delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to see the increase. I want to see the increase. And you must understand that the Lord said to this man, for unto everyone that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. Mm -hmm. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. Cast ye the unprofitable servant unto our darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He called him wicked. He called him slothful or lazy. And he called him, listen, unprofitable. Oh, you got to hear this. Unprofitable. Unprofitable. I couldn't get a profit out of it. Profit. Profit is what's left. That after you do the transaction, what's left is the profit. Mm -hmm. There's no profit. There's no surplus. There's no increase. I can't see more than what I initially gave you. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, Use it. Use it. Whatever he gave you, use it. Whatever he commanded, use it. Whatever he put in your hands, use it. Whatever is in your heart, whatever he put in your spirit, use it unapologetically. Use it. Without hesitation, use it. Without getting 20 confirmations, use it. Use it. Use it. That's all God told me to tell you. Use it. Use it until you use it up. Use it until hearts are changed. Use it until lives have been renewed. Use it. Use it until you have more than what you started with. Use it until there's great gain. Use it until God can say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to pray with you before I close this service today. But the word of the Lord to you is to use it. To use the money, the resources, the gifts, the talents, the ideas, the intellect, the wisdom, the life experiences that I've given to you, whether good or bad. God says, use it. That I might be glorified through your life. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you because I can feel the Holy Spirit stirring some things up in you. Stirring your heart, stirring your mind. I can feel something triggering you. And it's the word of God. It's the presence of God. All of us has an appointment with death. And when that time comes, at some point, God's going to check on what he gave you. And to be more specific, he's going to check on what, he, what did you do? with what he placed in your hands and did you do more with it than what you did when he first gave it to you. I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. And I pray with you that you will use the treasure within that you would no longer let others go before you. That you no longer would just sit by the side waiting. That you would not be the man sitting by the pool waiting for another 38 years for some man to put you in the pool. When you've had the time, when you've had the grace to do it your 
yourself. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this word, that this anointing will speak loud and clear into the hearts of your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will not ignore this word. That they will not just see it as a cute sermon, but they will see it as the word of life for their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will recognize that this is instruction for them. Even correction for them. This is an awakening word that you might come into what you were really designed for that you will not sit idle passive waiting for something to happen when the Lord has already put the thoughts, the ideas the institution the organization, the ministry the business it's already there I speak in the name of Jesus that every yoke in your life will be broken that burdens will be lifted. That the anointing of God will get so strong in your heart and in your spirit that you refuse to die where you are right now. I pray that a spirit of inspiration and motivation will counter you in a way that you can't even sleep tonight. That you go to bed with, with notes and, and, and notepads beside your bed. You're writing notes and writing ideas and plans and strategies for what you're getting ready to do in 2021. That you refuse to die with your gifts inside of you. That you refuse to die with the treasure still locked within you. That you refuse to go to the grave with everything that God deposited in you still there. I pray in the name of Jesus. I hear you. I can see you. There's a woman. There's a man. You're young. You still have a lot of days ahead of you. And God is saying, what are you going to do with what I gave you? What are you going to do with what I placed in your heart and placed in your spirit? And what are you going to do with the exposure that, that I allowed to come into your life? God says, Use it. Use it until demons are bound. Use it until hell is nervous. Use it until Satan is scratching his head trying to figure out what is he going to do next. Use it until confusion comes into the enemy's camp. Use it until nations are delivered. Use it until governmental systems have been transformed. Use what I gave you. Use the fire of God inside of you. Use your prayer life. Use your words. Use the intellect that I gave you and stretch your mind and come up with new inventions and new ideas to bring about deliverance for humanity. Use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, use it until chains are broken, until shackles are broken, until curses are broken. Use it. Don't sit on it, my brother. Don't sit on it, my sister. Don't sit on it. You sat on it long enough. God is saying now let that thing come out of you and let it flow like a river I pray in Jesus name that you will look at what God has given you in a new way that you will see it through a new set of eyes that you will see it as a blessing and not a curse that you will not just see it as little but that you will see the potential in it that you will stay in your lane of our Lord Jesus Christ come upon you. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Repeat this prayer after me. If you want Christ to come and live in you and lead you and guide you into the real life 
he has for you. Repeat this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead and that you gave him authority over all of heaven and the earth. I receive him now as my Lord and Savior, as my King. I denounce the works of Satan and Satan himself. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to type it up on the screen. I just gave my life to Jesus. We rejoice with you. We celebrate with you. Listen, all of heaven is rejoicing. All of the angelic host of heaven is rejoicing over the decision that you just made. You made the greatest decision known unto man to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have secured your future eternally. For life is in him. We bless you, my brother, my sister, for giving your life to the Lord. We want to reach out to you and minister to you and encourage you. Now that you have made that decision, type it on the, on the screen so that we can reach out to you and connect with you in the name of the Lord. Those of you that want to sow your seed, your tithes, your offerings, you can do that now while this anointing is flowing. Do it while the anointing is flowing. Don't wait till we go off the air. If you can do it now, do it. If you want to mail it in, mail it in at the P.O. Box address, P.O. Box 701066, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84170. Break that spirit that's trying to hold you. Download the Venmo out and sow your tithes and offerings that way as well. Yes. You'll be happy that you did. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Give it, give what God is placing in your heart to give. Give it sacrificially. Give it by faith. Give it out of obedience. And watch God do something that you couldn't do. Watch God bless you with something that you couldn't perform. Watch God bring something into manifestation that you couldn't pick up the phone to do. Watch God turn it around in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bless your seed. We bless your time of giving. We send an anointing of increase. We send an anointing of deliverance and prosperity and abundance in your life. And it's not just financial. God is sending the increase. He's sending a blessing, a holistic blessing, where he's touching every aspect of your life. Receive it now as you give today, as you sow your financial seed, as you sow your gift. The Lord is moving. Because he's got something for you to do. Don't sit on it any longer. Don't sit on it. Don't bury it. God's getting ready to use it. Listen, I've got to let you go. You know I love you. I'm praying for you. The best is yet to come. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Rejoice. For the Lord is with us and for us latter days will be greater than our former days. When he comes, let him find you working and laboring in his vineyard for his name's sake. We'll see you next time. May the Lord be with you. May his face shine upon you. May the blessing of the Lord overwhelm you. Until we see you again, be blessed in Jesus' name.